thank you for coming today. And on behalf of the Genetic Engineering and Society Center, uh, welcome to NC State University. Uh, for many of you, welcome back. Uh, to those of you streaming, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, speaking of streaming, we have a lot of microphones in the room, if you haven't noticed. Um, hopefully they will be turned on and off as appropriate, but just be aware at your tables when you're having discussions, you know, it might be, it might be hot, the mic might be hot, so. Um, but mostly those mics should just be for Q&A and, and most of the mics up here will be the ones that are only, uh, should be uh, in use for most of the time. So uh, I'm Zach Brown, I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics in the Genetic Engineering and Society Center. Um, we're here today for this Forging uh, Integrated Expertise in Graduate Education uh, Symposium. And I'm gonna tell you about why we're doing this meeting because that would be a good place to start. Um, a couple of other points I wanted to mention here too. You'll see, uh, I'll get to the program more later, but the research posters, uh, there's a set of research posters that are, the students are presenting in two sessions over, over the course of today. Um, they will be located in room 3285, which is downstairs near the overflow uh, room. So if you go, basically the poster room is right underneath of us. So if you go down the stairs and back, you'll find the poster room. There's some really great uh, research that we're very excited to showcase uh, in the poster session. So we hope that everybody here takes the opportunity to go talk with the speakers. If you look in the program, you'll see who is scheduled to speak with, uh, with which poster when for one of the two sessions. So, um, Yeah, I think that's it for this slide. Okay, so uh, the GS Center is an interdisciplinary pursuit at NC State with a mission to integrate scientific knowledge and public values to shape the futures of biotechnology. Uh, we hope to cover a lot of ground the next two days, so let me briefly orient you on why we've brought you together uh, and on the path ahead. So this meeting is about uh, how to build effective interdisciplinary graduate training programs. Some of you might wonder why the GES Center is hosting this meeting, during which we'll hear from interdisciplinary educational leaders from many fields, uh, from mechanical engineering, art and design, ecology, molecular biology, nutrition science, climate science, and even aerobiology, which I have not heard of until this meeting. The answer is that we originally conceived this meeting as an opportunity to celebrate the successes and share the lessons learned from a training grant awarded by the National Science Foundation in 2011 and ending this year. The GES Center essentially began life through this program, which has trained 21 NSF-funded PhD students and influenced the careers of many others. And just take a second to digest that, because when I wrote that on the page, it was really uh, humbling and, and made me proud to be a part of this program. The GES Center, GES Center essentially, um, no, sorry. Uh, students in this program have conducted research focused on different aspects of genetic engineering approaches to pest management. I know many of you have heard about new gene editing tools, uh, such as CRISPR and gene drives for controlling malaria, crop pests, and a host of other problems. Um, with these technologies, as many of you are aware, come unavoidable questions and concerns about ethics and equity. So the focus of this interdisciplinary PhD program seems surprisingly prescient in hindsight. But for those who put together the original proposals, plural, multiple proposals before we landed a successful one, I'm sure they questioned whether they were just tilting at windmills. You'll hear a lot more about this program today uh, from its director and my co-organizer, uh, Professor Fred Gould. As we discussed what we wanted to accomplish here, it became clear we had a much broader message to share that the GES Center and its accomplishments in informing the national dialogues on biotechnology would have remained an unrealized dream without our graduate students. I can speak for myself that these current and former students have been the glue that binds together our center's uh, achievements our faculty and our faculty affiliates who have departmental homes all across the university. Um, we wouldn't be able to have the, interaction, the, con the continuing interactions between the faculty across these departments without these graduate students. While we harbor diverse perspectives, I think I can speak for our faculty about one common belief, that integrative graduate student programs are the bedrock for successful interdisciplinary research of the kind increasingly needed to address society's grand challenges. From this realization, our mission, mission grew broader still. 
Why not use this opportunity for reflection to help not only ourselves conceive what comes next for our GES graduate program, but to support and learn from other such programs? After all, after all, ours was only one among hundreds of integrative graduate education re research traineeships. Mouthful. That's those are IGERTs for the for the initiated. Um, if I'm sure many of you in this room have applied to those proposals, funded by the National Science Foundation. Uh, we'll, we'll hear more about the IGERTs in their successor program, the NRT, the National Research Traineeship Program, uh, in our first keynote address this morning from Laura Ragasa. With that background in mind, um, let me just get finally to the objective of this meeting, which is to empower participants to support tomorrow's scholars in meeting society's grand challenges. Up on the, on the slide in case, um, just for reinforcement. To, to accomplish this, we'll hear a variety of examples that succeeded and sometimes failed, because I think that's half of the understanding here, is understanding uh, when things work and when they don't at effective interdisciplinary graduate training. Uh, today we'll hear from leading thinkers, and I'm sure you're no doubt aware, funders of interdisciplinary graduate training programs, including the National Science Foundation and the Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research. We'll also learn about the experiences of recent NRT programs at Clemson, the University of Oklahoma, and Rutgers University. Uh, tomorrow we'll also hear from Virginia Commonwealth University about how they've altered the structure of their graduate programs to foster interdisciplinary education. Equally as important, I believe, is to hear about the experiences of our own GES graduate students, both alumni and current students. Later this morning, they'll speak about the activities and research output of the program, as well as about how this experience affected their personal and professional trajectories. Rather than rely on coffee and our captivating speakers, we also aim to keep everyone awake today uh, through interactive parts of the program. Uh, the first is through the Q&A time. So every single uh, talk uh, will have a Q&A session following it. Um, and we have mics up here that we'll pass around for that purpose. Um, you'll note in the conference booklet page, on, on the topic of the Q&A, you'll note in the conference booklet page uh, a list of guidelines for respectful communication, uh, which I ask you to observe during the Q&A through experience in previous workshops that we've run. Those are on the slide here. Uh, these have come through hard-earned lessons we've acquired over the years in the GES Center in trying to maintain productive dialogue between people with extremely diverse, strongly held, and often, I found, contradictory views. Um, so I would encourage you to take a look at that. Another interactive element is the breakout groups at the end of tomorrow's meeting. The task of these groups will be, uh, will be to take identified barriers that have been discussed here uh, to effective interdisciplinary graduate training and come up with an action item, a uh, solution potentially to address it. As an economist, I've, in, I've ensured that there's an incentive. Uh, there will be a $25 gift certificate <laughs> to each member of the breakout group producing the best action item. And we will, we will vote uh, as a group on what we consider the best action item tomorrow. Um, that's just to give you some, something to do, you know, something to focus on during the breakout groups. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Um, to get there, I ask today that you, uh, that, that you do the following. As you listen uh, and discuss at your tables, I would like you to propose the barriers and challenges that these groups will address tomorrow. So we're, tomorrow we're going to talk about, in your breakout groups, you're going to talk about problems with effective interdisciplinary gradu graduate uh, training and come up with solutions you know, to, to addressing those problems. But today what we want to think about is what those problems are, actually. Um, and so that's, that's the goal, is to come up with, with a list of what problems we want to address in those breakout group discussions. Um, so you can do so, you can suggest problems and just feel free to basically uh, write, a, write an idea for a breakout group discussion topic on a scrap of paper and giving it to me or uh, one of the staff. Um, there's also a URL. As we get closer to the breakout group discussions, we're going to be using uh, uh, survey forms that you can fill out on your phone. Uh, and there's a URL to do that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring back up in a moment. Um, but yeah, we, we hope to elicit as many of those issues today so that we have good fuel tomorrow to, uh, for an effective breakout discussion. Um, yeah. yeah, so actually this is the, that's the URL if you want to scribble it down for today. This is an open-ended survey form, no names or it's anonymous, just um, you can just submit an idea for what you want to talk about in the breakout group. Or just write it on a scrap of paper. I, I promised Fred you could just write it on a piece of paper. And 
when we adjourn today, um, as part of this exercise, we will compile a list of those proposed barriers. Uh, we'll have them gathered together. And then at that point, we will ask you to actually uh, indicate your preference. That's the beginning of indicating uh, which breakout group you want to work in tomorrow. And then we'll take those results of, that, of those responses and try to aggregate people or sort people into which breakout group that they're interested in working with. Um, and then we'll do that again. We'll sort of iterate on that exercise in the morning, too, to just because some people will be here tomorrow that are not, here, are not present today. And so we'll, we'll, um, we'll sort people into those breakout groups over the course of the meeting. Um, and as I said, you can give that information to Sharon, myself, Sharon Stauffer, Fred, or Karina Smith. So um, those individuals are two among our incredible staff that I want to close by thanking. Oh, and actually, as a uh, as a reward, I mentioned a twenty five dollar. What's that? <laughs> okay. Uh, the $25 gift certificate is to Shapeways. We wanted to do Amazon, or Amazon was suggested, and we figured that was too vanilla. Uh, so this is a 3D printing website. Um, and you can either use the gift certificate to print something yourself or buy um, on, 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 among some of, the, some of the goods produced by merchants that they've come up with and printed. It's really a pretty incredible site, the stuff that people come up with for that. It's kind of like the Etsy of 3D printing is what I would describe it as. So to work hard in those breakout groups, that's my, that's my message. Okay, so I want to close just by uh, thanking the staff. Uh, we have three staff members uh, with the center uh, who've helped with this meeting. Uh, Patty Mulligan, our communications director. Um, so a lot of all the uh, electronic stuff, a lot of the stuff that goes right today, uh, well, in addition to the, to the streaming crew back there, uh, but a lot of the stuff that goes right today we can thank Patty for. And she worked so hard, she's come down sick, and so she's not actually here present at the meeting, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to do the best to fill her shoes, which is a, a difficult task. Um, Sharon Stauffer is our center program specialist. You'll see her uh, moving, uh, moving around the meeting. She's sitting outside right now. Uh, and Karina Smith is the IGERT program coordinator. So she was a coordinator on the NSF-funded uh, PhD student uh, grant. Uh, just to mention funding sources, uh, the IGERT uh, graduate program funded a portion of this meeting, as well as the College of Agriculture at uh, NC State uh, through a Dean's Enrichment Grant, and the GES Center core funding also supported some of these activities. So we are, we are invested in this meeting. Okay, I'll put that back up there. Actually, let me put that up there in case you want to fill out the survey. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce the NC State Provost, Warwick Arden, and the Dean of the College of Agriculture, uh, Richard Linton. These two individuals have been champions of the GES Center faculty and graduate students. Provost Arden took up his current role at NC State in 2009, before which he was the Dean of the Veterinary College and, and served as the President of the Association of American Veter Veterinary Medical Colleges. He has authored over 100 scientific articles, abstracts, and chapters, uh, we invited him to open our meeting because of his commitment to interdisciplinary scholarship. He has been instrumental, for example, in building and sustaining the Chancellor's Faculty Excellence Program, a flagship university program that has brought over 65 faculty to NC State in the creation of 20 interdisciplinary clusters, including the GES cluster that brought me here. Uh, following Provost Arden will be Dean Richard Linton, who will introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Laura uh, Ragasa. Uh, Dr. Linton serves as the Dean of the College of Agriculture and uh, Life Sciences, before which he was Chair of the Department of Food, and S Food Science and Technology at The Ohio State University. He was telling me about bu keeping uh, Buckeyes in his pocket this morning wow. for good luck, exactly. Uh, he has received many awards for his contributions for to, to food safety, including national recognition by the Institute of Food Technologists. We're very happy to have him uh, today as a strong supporter of the GES Center's work and for his demonstrated commitment to interdisciplinary research, extension, and education. A great example of this commitment, uh, I think, is his leadership in implementing the university's plant sciences initi initiative, uh, which we'll hear about throughout the meeting. Okay, I think with that, uh, I want to thank you again for being here today. And with that, I'll pass the podium to Provost Arden. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So uh, it's great to be with you this morning. Um, a lot of familiar faces here, but for those who are visiting, 
NC State uh, welcome, uh, an official welcome to NC State. I hope that in addition to having a great couple of days, you get a chance to get out and uh, spend a little bit of time around our campus. It's really quite beautiful this time of the year, a little a touch cooler, a touch less humid today than, uh, than yesterday. Uh, when I, it was supposed to be not so bad yesterday, but it turned out to be a little toasty. One of my sons competed in the uh, Ironman 70 mile triathlon yesterday and I was I, I, I was exhausted just watching them, right? you know, but that's, that's what a dad does. So this is a, a great symposium and a, uh, a really timely symposium. You know, I hear a lot about interdisciplinary, convergent, or integrative graduate education as though it was the norm in graduate education. For those of us who have been at this for a number of years, we really know that there is a tremendous amount of effort that goes into producing a sustainable, functioning, and truly integrative graduate program. It requires a lot of energy and a lot of effort, both by faculty and uh, even the odd administrator. And it comes with challenges to our students and our faculty who are expected to stay up to date in their disciplines while learning how other disciplines gather information and communicate. And so some of these can be extraordinarily difficult things to balance. I'm impressed by the diversity of experiences and perspectives that are presented here in the, this room and this meeting today. And that I gather in addition to celebrating the success of various programs, presenters are going to talk about some of the challenges that they faced in developing and sustaining their programs I think it's really important to, um, to talk about what strategies were implemented to address those challenges and what worked and what didn't work. Um, Zach mentioned an interdisciplinary cluster hiring program that we kicked off about six, seven years ago. Uh, we've now hired, it's, it's getting close to 75 faculty uh, into 20 interdisciplinary clusters. But one of the smartest things that we did, and I think one of the reasons that that program has been so successful, is we actually spent a year, and we had an ACE fellow working with us, uh, we spent a year uh, going around the country visiting other universities and programs and studying what worked and what didn't work. A lot of universities have tried interdisciplinary cluster hiring with some great successes and some less than successes. So it's really important to think about what are the challenges and be thinking proactively about what strategies have a proven track record and, and, and what, uh, what does not. We all know that perseverance is critical to the success of these endeavors and that uh, those entering this arena really have much to learn from those that have been doing this for a while. So I think this is one of the great values of a symposium like this. I'm extraordinarily proud of the faculty and the students here at NC State who have taken on this challenge of interdisciplinary graduate education and most importantly persisted. We've got a few success stories on our campus. You'll be hearing from one today, the Genetic Engineering and Society Center and its interdisciplinary undergraduate uh, minor. Uh, just as important, of course, is providing our students with not just an interdisciplinary education, but assuring we're equipping them with, with relevant skills. And so it's great that in tomorrow's part of the symposium, we have employers talking about what are the relevant skills that they're looking for. There was a day uh, where the majority of our doctoral graduates went into academia. Uh, I think that day is, is, is past and uh, in this day and age, often the majority of our graduates uh, are going into uh, other venues, although many will continue in academia. So we have to be very, very mindful of the skill sets that are necessary for our graduates to be successful, whether it's in academia, private industry, or, or otherwise. I want to add that we should remember that graduate education is not just about getting a job. I often have to remind uh, folks, particularly the odd legislator, uh, who wants to talk about um, you know, jobs that are available today in the industry that's available today. And I remind them that when I graduated, uh, 
less from, at least from the first one or two of my degrees, uh, the IT industry didn't exist. Now, I know that's dating myself quite a bit, but when you think about it and how huge a sector the IT industry is now 30 years later, uh, we really have to be graduating individuals who are prepared for successful careers, irrespective of what comes to the table. And most importantly is producing well-educated, well-rounded citizens. I will tell you, more than ever today, uh, we really need well-educated, thoughtful people who are committed to generating a better society. So thank you for what you do. I think this is a great symposium. I'm really excited about it. Thank you to Fred and Zach and the organizers. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dean Linton. Thank you. Have a great day. Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome from the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences at uh, NC State. I will tell you, um, thank you for the glasses. These will go to my 11-year-old son. This will entertain him for about two hours tonight, especially with his 13-year-old sister. So I'll report back on the findings. Um, I was asked to talk a little bit about uh, interdisciplinary work and some of, the, some of the things that we are doing in the college, the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences at NC State. To give you a perspective of the college, we're one of the largest colleges of agriculture and life sciences uh, in the country, ranked about seventh or eighth in the country holistically, 3,000 undergraduate students, um, 1,009 graduate students, which actually places us third in the nation. So if you're from UC Davis or Texas A&M, you're, you're next. We're coming after you to try to be second anytime soon. But we've grown from 15th in the nation to third in the nation over the last four to five years. Second largest cooperative extension network in the country. So we're very, very proud of what we're doing for the state of North Carolina, the nation, and the world. I wanted to just show by way of pictures some of the interdisciplinary work in which we're doing and, and the different ways in which we're integrating interdisciplinary work. This is just a, a, an aerial photograph, if you will, of the college strategic plan. You can see in the middle is, is our stakeholders. We have over 90 different commodity groups in the state of North Carolina. We're very, very diverse when it comes to agricultural production and our students trying to enhance the experience that they have so that they're truly ready not only to be uh, actively involved in the workforce, but to be leaders in the workforce. But it's all focused on the surrounding interdisciplinary work, integrating research, education, and outreach, and collaboration and partnering with, um, with, with partners that focus on, on, on education, agriculture, and life sciences. And I love the quote at the bottom, grand global challenges are undisciplined. They are not confined to specific academic or research silos. And at the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, we are transforming grand challenges, grand global challenges, into agriculture and life science opportunities through smart cross-disciplinary collaboration. And these are some of the cross-collaboration interdisciplinary programs that our college is focusing on, the right-hand side of the slide. I wanted to just pull out two examples just to give you a perspective. You're going to learn a little bit more today about the North Carolina Plant Sciences Initiative. We have the aspiration to be best in the world when it comes to research and education around plant sciences. And, and this is, from a research perspective, what we are trying to build, excellence in plant improvement, resilient agricultural systems, and data-driven science. And on the right-hand side are all the interdisciplines, all the different kinds of disciplines that we need to bring together to make it happen, not only within our college, but across our college, partnering with other universities and partnering with the private industry. As an example, when you talk about data-driven science, that's about plant science, it's about soil science, microbiology, engineering, economics, that's about um, computer science, it's about statistics, it's about math computation, it's about data engineering. We'll need to partner with other disciplines, we'll need to partner with other industries in order to be able to make uh, this, um, this world-class excellence. Just another example here is the Center for Excellence in Animal Nutrition and Gut Health another cross-college um, enterprise with the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences and the College of Veterinary Medicine. And again, look at all the disciplines that need to come together in order to be able to create excellence across animal nutrition and gut health. 
this is what we need to do as a university. This is what we need to be training our students to be involved in, in uh, and have that experience. We're also um, building buildings thinking interdisciplinary. This is, uh, we're gonna learn more about the Plant Sciences Initiative a little bit later tomorrow, but this building is not a building of horticulture or plant science or crop science or entomology or plant pathology. It's a building about the grand global challenges that impact agriculture and life sciences. And we are building this building to create collisions, to be able to foster interdisciplinary work. And it's about two things. It's about interdisciplinary science and about private-public partnerships. So in this building, you will see the economists, the engineers, the plant scientists, the soil scientists. You'll see folks that are from private industry working together to be able to leverage our ideas and leverage our resources and moving forward to be able to make a difference in North Carolina agriculture. We are also hiring thinking interdisciplinary. So we have taken the, the 40 or so different units within the college, which include departments, interdisciplinary groups and centers, and we've collapsed them into four different units, one that surrounds an, an emphasis in plants, one around animals, one around food systems, and one around humans. And we're trying to be able to bring the different groups together to have conversations about how we can build interdisciplinary faculty justifications in order to be able to make good decisions about faculty hiring and moving forward. So every, the, the point I'm trying to make is everything we do we think from an interdisciplinary perspective. You know, and, and faculty are always ahead of administration. I will tell you, one of my first phone calls that I received some five and a half years ago was a phone call from Fred Gould saying, Dean, I got a deal for you. I got four other colleges that are on board. They've already committed to an investment to build out what we're calling GES. And he says, are you on board? Of course, I went back and I looked at the strategic plan and it's exactly what our college and our university is all about. I was happy to make that investment, and I think it's one of the hallmark programs that we use to be able to talk about the impact, the positive impacts of interdisciplinary programs. So, Fred, um, to you and your colleagues, a job very, very well done.